It's the Yucky Ideas Podcast with Marissa and Tamika. Look, I'd rather be a gambler than a weekend. I walked in, sat down, had to leave, and violently vomited. I'm not going down that hole. I'm not. Don't even try me. Not today, Dean. <laughs> not today. I got you. My precious. Oh, You're okay. the cream. And the coffee is life. Life. You bring cream to my life. Once a week for an hour. (laughs) Hello. How's life? Life. Life, you're the cream to my coffee. You're the coffee. I'm the coffee to your cream. Come up with your own analogy. <laughs> uh, anyway, how's, how's it going? Good. Yeah, it's a nice sunshiny day on Long Island. When no. Recorded last week. I got speaking of our clip. I got like a, I wouldn't say violently, but I got ill. <gasps> after my shot I was like at my dad's house and he took care of me in the way that he takes care of me you know toast and water but I recommend anybody get the shot because I feel a lot I feel like my mind is at at ease now and And how how was like so the first day was good it was just like the second day yeah, the second shot, but they said to, to expect that. Even the pharmacist gave me the shot. I had the Moderna, <laughs> and the Moderna um, has a little bit more side effects. Um, basically, the side effects are like you're getting you're getting it, the flu, right? Which is to be expected because it's happened with people that get the traditional flu shot, you know. So, right. Like, uh, like I said, I'm just happy to be vaccinated. vaccinated and think about people as themselves you know I, just, I mean I, I know people have their own reasons but I don't want to make the show about vaccinations but I don't know I, I haven't had a, I have not heard a valid excuse when I hear when I breath, definitely will put it you know I'll definitely accept that but I haven't had heard a valid excuse why people don't get vaccinated but why are you looking at me like that no, 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 I'm well. If everybody doesn't what, see us. Some people hear us. So. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, well, so you think that everyone should be vaccinated? I yeah, unless, like I said, I haven't heard a valid excuse as to why people have not been vaccinated. So I don't see okay. why people shouldn't get vaccinated. The excuses I I've heard were like the QAnon shit, you know, political reasons, mm-hmm. our freedom. We just don't want to. How about that? Like, but nobody's ever said that. I, nobody's ever said I just don't want to do it. They come with an excuse. It's never like, oh, I, okay. I just don't want to do it. It's always like they're trying to kill us. The poison in our body, like you know what I'm saying. It's never like I just. It's just a personal choice. I don't want to do it. Okay. Just that's I, people. People. Nobody's ever said to me, or they'll say I want to wait for other people to get vaccinated, which is fine. But I, I don't know if that's if, if sometimes I feel like some people use try to come up with these excuses. They feel uncomfortable just saying, I don't want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Just right. Like with anything in life. He's like, I don't feel comfortable telling you that I just don't have a reason. I just don't want to do it. So I'm going to come up with a whole bunch of things, talking points that I've heard from other people. You know what I mean? Okay. But I just, you know, when I hear a, a, a good, enough excuse to me personally or that I've read or heard other people say Mm -hmm. I have no choice but to to respect that but the whole like you know they're trying to kill us really they're trying the the American government is trying to kill us or the people who like I saw someone who said that she went to go visit her children her, her daughter and her grandchildren and they wouldn't let her in the house because there's a group of people that think that even if you're near them, it messes with their fertility. 
who is vaccinated? Yeah, so example, for example, if I'm vaccinated and I'm next to somebody who's trying to have a baby, they don't want to be near me because they feel like the waves from me, stuff that I'm giving off could mess them up. You haven't read this? All these, there's a whole bunch of faction of people no. who believe by even standing next to someone who's vaccinated messes up their fertility. I I have not heard this. When you get off okay. this, when you get off this podcast, you're gonna go into a whole web. I don't know if you should, because I'm not going like down that rabbit. Like goes down the dark web, and all of a sudden you're sending me stuff. And I'm like, these people are crazy. Nothing. You're like entertained by that shit, and I'm like, these people. Are crazy. I I know. Why am I so entertained? I don't know. But one day you're gonna turn into my cousin and start believing that shit. Gosh, I, I hope not. <laughs> conspiracy theories. I hope I do, but hold on though. I will say this. I, I, I do believe in some conspiracy theories. I will say I, I, I do. I do. So you believe in um, Pizza Gate? What? Pizza Gate. What? Pizza Gate. Oh, Pizza Gate. Do I no. Do I believe you gotta let me know Gate? if you can't hear me so I can fix my, my mic. Oh. I texted you, by the way. I didn't I didn't see it. I'm trying to stay off my phone. Oh. Um, so Pizzagate, do I believe in Pizzagate? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I believe it. I don't know if I not believe it. Um, I don't know. Really? So you believe? believe I, I said, I don't know if I believe you it. Know, I don't, believe what do you, I don't know if what I do don't you know about Pizzagate. Just make sure we're talking about the same thing. Um, the pedophile ring in Manhattan. Okay. All right. So moving on. Today is that show, what we're talking about? Yeah, it's a whole yeah, pet, but in a in a pizza pizzeria, they're they're hiding they have a ring in the bottom of a pizzeria and somebody goes there and shoots up the place. Oh, shoots up the place. Yeah, it's a whole thing. The whole pizza gate thing. They went into the pizzeria and shot up the, the place because they thought they were hiding children in the basement through a smuggling ring. I digress. This is a show for another for the well, well, day. Hold I'm, on a second, like, I'm not I can't. I'm not gonna just def- wait, well hold on a second. When it comes to listen, there what what people I'm not gonna say that specific instance in, instance incident was it was few because they believe that Hillary Clinton was the ringleader of it. Yeah. Okay. Now you're going down the, the dark hole of it all. Well, well yeah, that's the that's the Pizza Gate. Street. That's the whole thing that spawned the whole thing with the shooting in the the basement. Okay, but so there's components of that that I do believe. Do I believe that there are pedophile rings out there that operate clandestinely? Right. Yes, absolutely, I do. That okay, exact pizzeria, I don't know. That's different than Pizza Gate. Like I believe in pedophilia rings. I mean, the guy just that killed himself, but last year, what's his name? The I mean, I believe in these whole rings of people that you know get women, young young girls, 14, 15, mm-hmm. 16 year olds from different countries to service the needs of wealthy men. Mm-hmm. Do I believe that Hillary Clinton is the head of a ring that is smuggling people through the basements of pizzerias? <laughs> I don't know. I. I don't know. She- so, so when you said that you don't know one way or the other, I'm like, okay, we should move. Oh on. no! See, you're go- you're delving into like the the rabbit hole of but it. That's, all. But that's like, Pizzagate. That's what Pizzagate was. But but okay, let let me backtrack what I'm trying to say, or let me okay. let me clarify what I'm trying to say. Okay. I do be- I do believe there are pedophile rings that operate clandestinely. Okay. A thousand percent, yes. That exact pizzeria, exactly who's involved. I don't think I'll ever know. I don't think any of us will ever know. But yes, I do believe people operate clandestinely in the deep dark bowels, and I think that half half of the time, it's um, it's it's part of the um. What do you call that? Like, uh, it, it's your neighbor next door. You didn't even know. Like, I had a whole meth lab at the end of my block, and we have um, a chief of police, two detectives. Chief of police, two detectives, and uh, um, like a, I think he's like a, he's a cop, but I don't know what division. So four cops, 
on the same block as a full on meth lab. Well, that doesn't say anything to me because I mean, if there's four cops in the same block, there's also, I mean, that's a whole nother policing. You know what I mean? Like they, they come home, they're not policing their street. You know what I mean? They, they think they live in a neighborhood that's like, oh, this is perfect. It's a good neighborhood. No issues, no problem. I think most police officers don't live in the neighborhoods that they patrol in terms of like crime ridden neighborhoods. They don't expect to find Walter White in their neighborhood. You know what I mean? But so when you say four police officers. But I'm making the point to say that I'm not making the point to say that these cops should have known. What I'm saying is that I believe people operate clandestinely right. and doing, you know, probably right. not the best things for society. Well, I'm just going to say for the record, I personally do not believe that Hillary Clinton is the ring, the head of a pedophilia ring that operates out of a pizzeria in Washington, D.C. I just don't. And then, then, then we can all move on from there. Happy Mother's Day, Hillary. So today's show is, um, is, is a Mother's Day themed show. Uh, so let, is my audio a little bit better? It's a lot better? Okay, perfect. Perfect. Um, today's show is Celeb Moms, TV Moms, and Our Moms, a Mother's Day show. Um, okay. So we've all, we, we have this weird obsession as a country, I believe, with celeb and the unknown and the fantastical. And so we love, we love to compare our lives to the lives of our neighbor, the lives of people on TV, <laughs> the lives of celebrities we've never met, and make assumptions about whether if they're real people, make assumptions about how they raise their kids or make assumptions about like TV moms, like this is this is how most families are supposed to live. Meanwhile, you know, your mom's like, get in the house, eat your dinner, don't throw eat every scrap of it. You know, you don't see that shit on TV really. They right. like, you know what I'm saying? So I right. wanted to to like have a conversation about, you know, our our moms, and not as, it doesn't have to be necessarily our moms, but how we're <laughs> our mother figures. Mm -hmm. And um, in comparison to celeb and television mothers, was there like a mom when you were like a little kid that you can think of on like TV or celeb? It's like hard because there's, there's so much TV in the years, in the 40 plus years we've been alive. Mm -hmm. Like trying, even preparing for the show, I'm like the TV mom from back in the day, from, you know, before we were born, like the I love Lucy mom. Like I didn't see her as a mother, even though she had a, she had a son. On Little the Ricky. Yeah. And then, you know, the Donna Reed show and all those mm -hmm. shows and, you know, leave it to Beaver. They were right. like hands off moms that like gave everything to the father to do. Like he was a disciplinarian. All she did was like cook and, you know, and just be home, <laughs> iron his, iron the kid's clothes, you know, fix a ribbon, you know, in the girls mm -hmm. it was never really it didn't seem believable and then as time grew on you know you, you see you know Brady Bunch and as you get older Parsha's family you know it's just very different. you know what I wanted Mrs. Garrett somebody she, who just listened she to was my a mother. Shit. she had two sons but they only they never really came on the show no but she was just somebody there to just listen and like you know and and, and she was always encouraging Yep. And she had like, <laughs> she had no biases. No. She was like, you know, just what do what you do. Facts of life. Facts of life. Wait. Even when she was on different strokes. Remember when she was, she the was on different strokes? She, yes. She, she got, um, she, they gave her her own show. She was popular. She with. was. So yes, yeah, I thought she was a good mother figure. Definitely. Especially considering they, considering they all had mothers that whenever they de depicted the mom on the show, it was like so involved. I'm like, really? Yeah. Your kids but weren't they in a boarding school? Yeah, like all year. Yeah. <laughs> Even though they, and then they, owned a, they came then home. They opened, and then they opened a candy store somehow. Yeah, and they all like live together still. Like, I don't even like, when I think about friends from elementary school 
and beyond. Mm -hmm. like, I, I don't like I have Facebook friends from high school, but I don't really have a relationship with them. Like from school. Yeah. Like, do you? Um, like a relationship. A relationship, but uh, but that word is so subjective. No, a relationship like, in the sense that, okay, I can break it down. Relationship where you call this person, you don't send them a, a text or a direct message or something or post on their birthday, happy birthday, but you call them, hey, what are you getting into? And they're cooking, having a conversation, like a real conversation. I don't do that with anybody on the phone. You do that with me. What are you talking about? Oh. But okay, and my afterthought, I know. No, you're not an afterthought. I just like, I don't know. I'm trying to think. I have you to talk to your brother. Or the, like you'll have a conversation with your brother. You have yeah. conversations with, with your cousin. Like yeah. it's not, I'm talking about like, do you have friends who you used to talk to like every day at school and like you just, now you continue to have a relationship with them. That's going to be a no. Yeah. The same here. Like I don't, but I have work friends after school. You know what I mean? <laughs> After school. <laughs> but like that's why the facts of life doesn't seem believable. Because yeah. they all four of them remained friends and opened a business together. Really? Yeah. And then to find out behind the scenes that Tootie and, and Blair were friends in real life. Really? Oh, I'm sorry, it's Tootie and Joe. Because they were close oh, okay. in age. Tootie and Joe. Okay. I would, I but on the show is Natalie and Tootie. You know what I'm saying? So you're thinking, yeah. See, this is why TV is make believe, and so we can't <laughs> we can't turn to those those aspects of life to determine, you know, whether someone is or is not a good mom per se. What about the nine zero two one zero mom? Oh, uh, they were never around either. Yeah, it's like no, no, no. I no. did put together. But, uh, go ahead. But I, I would say that television doesn't usually portray a parent-child relationship as a friendship or a bond. It's always like when you look at like kids programming, I'll, I'll use like today's shows, like um, it's always like, you know, like the dopey dad who's like, yo, mm, bloopy. And like right. the mom who's always trying to be like, yeah, kids, I'm young. Oh, what's up, guys? I'm wearing the same thing. Right. You know? So it's like, it's never really like, you know, but it's TV. like, I'm the mother and you're the child. I don't care if you're, you know, 50. It's never yeah. like a, a friendship, really. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. So I put together a collage based on some of our thoughts. So we can talk about okay. some these, these mothers. You able to see it? Okay. Mm -hmm. ah! How did I forget Sophia? So Sophia, to me, was one of those where you were talking about moms and friends. She was one of those mothers who seemed yes. like a friend to her daughter and her daughter's friends. And I yes. could believe, I could believe, um, like I could see my mother being friendly with my friends. Yeah. Like, like my mom lived with me, you know, my, like, yeah. it's, it, to me, that's why that show was so good. Cause it, in a lot of ways it was believable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, okay. So Sophia, to me, she was like the perfect mom. You know what I mean? She's yeah. like, picture it. <laughs> yeah, picture it. She'd tell her daughter, like, you know, you you are you're you had a you had a date, really? Who was interested in you? You know what I mean? And then, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the same token, like, I love you, baby, pussy cat. She always called a pussy cat. Like she, Aww. you know what I mean? So I think she she would um bust her chops, but she would yeah. also, you know, yeah, be be a, a mother you know what I mean so mm -hmm. so I liked her <laughs> even though she's been canceled quote unquote Roseanne to me was like she was like a perfect tv mom because she was like she was relatable she was involved yeah she was she way showed... too over involved but what you know that's kind of what kids want yeah. from their moms in a lot of ways. even though like a lot of us when at that age we wouldn't have admitted that we wanted to overly you know, involved mother. Overbearing, yeah. Overbear yeah, exactly. Um, but we all do. Exactly. Act like you care. Shit. Right? You know? And then to see how the show has evolved today, 
and it's a it's a it's a good show because you don't you don't normally see a show or characters age 20 something years 30 almost 30 years because you figure like darlene on the show she was like she's like my age i think we're like a, a year or two apart so she's like wow six or so 40 so i i don't know i'm not remember, remember the exact age but on the show she was like she started at like 12 11 or 12. So the evolution of those characters is right. cool to see because you don't get to see that. People are like, yeah. and then when you see them years later, you're like, wow, you look old. And meanwhile, they look their age, but. Yeah, but you've stop. been looking at them for so long. And you continue to look at them, you know, you still yeah. look at and stuff. So it's like, oh my gosh. Anybody stand out for you? Uh, well, <laughs> my queen chris jenner <laughs> i'm obsessed care? okay so first of all i mean hail to the queen i gotta say this bitch made fucking wine out of water she took literally nothing and made something out of it and continues to do that like i don't know how many times on this show she has sold and resold and repackaged in so many different ways like you want to talk about merchandising the Kardashians have every, I feel like every corner of the merch market you can think of. They used to have websites, they had apps, they had like whatever you can think of, a Kardashian name is on it. Um, and Momager is getting her, her coins. And you know what, what you see on the show, as much as they, you know, like, oh, you're so annoying. Why are you so involved? But they don't do any step of their life without her. And they seem very close. And me, for what I want for my kids is that not that I listen, it would be my dream that they didn't make a move without like checking in with me first, of course, but um, it's just a dream. I think it would be a dream to have that kind of relationship with my kids where not only are they comfortable enough to tell me the dirty, but they're comfortable enough to tell me the, the amazing things, you know, the highs and lows and you want that relationship. Okay. So, and then uh, Chrissy Teigen, love her. Um, she has uh, three children, um, one rainbow and two living, and she just seems to be just there for Play it. rainbow she, for the people that don't know. She has a child who passed. Um, I, I don't think the baby passed in utero. I can't remember. Um, but her son, Jack, uh, died at birth. Um, actually, and then he wouldn't be a rainbow baby. Never mind. Um, and then she's got her two, her two living children, it's Luna and Miles, and she's just so involved. Like if you look at her social media, she's always cooking with them and seeing them and she's just laughing all the time with them. And she's also not, she tells you how like, you know, there's moments where there's high and there's low and, you know, she just tries to always encourage them to just enjoy the moment that they're in. I appreciate that from a mom. So the thing that like when I compare the two, um, like with Kris Jenner, we see how she has raised her children. Chrissy, mm. Chrissy how she's raising them. Right. Everything was all good just a week ago. You know, your kid can be a crackhead. You know, it's like, oh, she did such a great job. And then like, oh yeah, we had to, you know, put such and such in rehab because and then the kid comes out like mommy wasn't there she was she was so busy put a gram you know you're like oh he's posting a lot you know <laughs> like so so until until oh, somebody was... comes out like as an adult yeah 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 like past 20 something and you're like okay like i, I look at um what's his name that's married to um uh oh, damn what's her name oh man i can't he, his father was, was, was he Spartacus? And then, and then him, and then his son. Michael Douglas. Michael, Michael Douglas. What's his wife's name? Catherine Zeta-Jones. Right. So his first wife and him, he had, they had a son, and the son was with all these legal troubles, drugs, went to jail, you know? And, but, like, as a kid, it's like he's in, in the movies with them, and, like, he's such a good kid. You know what I mean? Until this person is like an adult on their own, like when it comes to celebrity, I can't mm -hmm. really give a good indication. And is it fair to, now that I'm thinking, is it fair to blame the parent for a kid becoming a drug addict? 
what responsibility does a parent bear in that? Um, I'm, we'll say mother, because we're talking about moms, but it's parents, really. That's such an interesting question, because so there, there's, there's a certain point in your life where you no longer have the excuse to say it was my upbringing, it was this, it was that, it was my parents, whatever. Um, I don't know when at that moment changes. I really don't. But as far as um, you, as I don't know if there's an age, I don't know if there's a moment, but <clears throat> the responsibility a parent has is to make sure that their children have solid ground and that could be anywhere. Um, you know, they feel wanted and loved. And I think when you have all those components, um, that addiction monster doesn't rear its ugly head because, you know, while I do think ad addiction is, you know, a lot of that has to do with genetics. I think we look. Oops, I lost you. Uh, guys, we'll be right back with Marissa. I don't know what happened to her. We'll be right back. Hey, guys. We're back. Uh, got, got Marissa back. All right. So, what were you saying? Do you remember what you were saying? Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> so it was so sudden. But I think we were just talking about, you know, moms. And yeah. TV and. You just want your mom to be there, overbearing. Exactly. But overbearing. But I, mean, I, don't, I don't think we even got to the moms, but I just like the difference between. Chrissy and 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 um oh yeah um Chris Jenner Chris Jenner it's like like oh with the, with the drug thing the, the uh you blame right me. at what point are you responsible at what point are you as an adult responsible and not no longer but my thing is like what like at what point do you say I have a lifetime responsibility because my kids started using drugs at as a 12 year old Oh. Oh. Like that's heartbreaking. You don't need to absolve yourself because now they're they're eighteen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you don't I don't think a parent ever stops being a parent and taking responsibility for the choices that they've made in the lives of their children. Now, do as a child, do you continuously blame your parents when you know better? You're supposed to do better. So there's no, no, there comes a point where you have to take ownership. Right. But I don't, at the same time, like, as a, as a minor, it's like, okay, well, they got here, like, you have to take some responsibility in that as a parent, like, they got here because I didn't see, I wasn't paying attention, whatever the case may be, you know what I mean? Yeah. And they're crying out and I didn't notice. And so... You know, when we look at Kris Jenner, we see how she, her children are adults now with children. Right. So do we say, do we pick and choose who she did a good job with and who she hasn't? Or do we well, she had two younger life? ones when what? her show started. What? There were two younger ones when the show started. Right. So, I mean, we did see how she did raise her kids. Right. Now, but do we, I'm talking about how they, how they ended up, because if we're going to equate success to be monetary, then okay, she was, she's been a successful mother. No, I, I'm talking strictly in terms of how her kids and her, like the, the perception of their relationship, how they're always checking in with her when it's, even if it's good or bad, they're always checking in with her. They right. always seem to be together. They're always talking about, you know it's Mother's Day, I have to make sure my mom feels special. It's her birthday and we want to make sure she feels celebrated. It's when they talk about gra uh, their grandmother, MJ. When they talk about each other, they really do try to make each other feel celebrated. And the way you see that they react to their siblings' children, to each other's children, it's always like, hi, give me a kiss, come here. You know what I mean? And like, it, there's like such an excitement even for each other's children. Right. You don't always get that. And that, I think, is a, su a successful parenting situation. Right, right. Yeah, I could definitely um, 
I could definitely see that, see that aspect. So before we go back to talking about real life mothers, we'll go back to TV moms again. Okay. So we got Claire Huxtable, who she continuously voted as like one of the top 10 favorite TV moms. Yeah. But I mean, like what made her so great? Um, I mean, I don't know. She was know. there. She was present. Okay. She talked to her kids. She gave them real life lessons. And she was also their champion. And she worked. Yeah, and she worked. That's that's a good good ass and a good ass job too. You know, do you remember the episode where she goes to visit one of her kids' apartments with the husband? Oh uh, yeah, and like there's something with the yeah, and it's like tell them your mother in laws here. Tell them I'm a lawyer. And it's like you know what I mean. That's what you and want, you, right? You yeah. You, know, you don't want to have to ask for it though. No, you don't want to have to ask for it. And that's the whole thing. And then even like, you know, it's like, like, I don't know. It's just like, you want to make sure that your parents always got your back. You don't want to turn around and be like, can you help me? Like, you're standing right here, bitch. Hook up, hook me up. It's true. <sighs> like, like, even with, when it comes to on a personal life, when it comes to my mom, it's like, like, I'd, I'd be like, damn, I know if I ask my mom for $20, she, she, she'd give them to me, no questions asked. But just the feeling of, like, mom, can I get 20? You know what I mean? It just. Yeah. You know? And so, like, when the thing that made Claire relatable and it's the same thing that I experienced in my life, it's just a mother will give you what you need without you having to ask for it. A good mother isn't yeah. too good at that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, oh, my God. I prayed for that way. Good. She was good. What about Bo from uh, Blackish? So, like, I don't know if you watch the show, but or I do the watch show. the show. So, I think um, I think she's good. I think she's a she's a good mother, but I think she's also one of those. She's an epitome of today's mom, like trying to be young, like trying to be <laughs> like hip, like I'm I'm not as old as you know. I might have like kids in college, but whatever. I can. Mm, dip I got a new baby too. Exactly. Dip it in doing it. At preschool with your kid, like, come on, you know your back hurts. Exactly. Yeah. But I mean, I like to see it. But you know what else I like to see? How she just like, um, she 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 does the whole like, this is how they feel. So let's honor that. You know right. what I mean? I appreciate that. Right. I you know, especially you always want to do that when it's like, you know, your child. Right. Exactly. So then we have Jada in real life. And I, this goes back to, I put her on there because it goes back to what I was mentioning before where, okay, it's great to see them as kids, but now they're adults. We see what you've done. We, see, we get to open up the pet present that's been sitting there for 20 years. Right. And so I, you know, I think overall she's, she's been a good mother considering the celebrity trappings, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I'm not, you know, I, I saw her on social media the other day, her daughter for, for Mother's Day reunited Jada's old um, rock band, Wicked Wisdom. And oh, like yes. that to me is a, and she sang with them. You know what I mean? It's like. I love that. that, that was I thought cool. that was so cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and her kids seem to be very like, you know, that's my mother. That's my friend. And that, at the end but, of the day, don't, isn't that what you want? Remember all those years people kept like shitting on them? Like those kids raised themselves. What the hell are they doing? Why yep. is he in a skirt today? Meanwhile, right. now everybody wears skirts. Exactly. Isn't that crazy? You know what I mean? The hair, like she... they cut her hair, she cut her hair off. What's wrong with her? Yeah. Like every but it's like thing. They, they really went in on them and those kids. And yep. it was like, he's wearing a skirt. He's not like caught with like some hooker, underage hooker. He's right. wearing a skirt. You right. know what I mean? And it was just like one of those things where it's like, I don't know. It, it was so like, they really went in on her and she just stood steadfast in her and she didn't explain it because it wasn't right. for no, it wasn't for nobody to be explained about. Like it is what it, it is. It, you know, I, the last thing a mom needs to do is make excuses for her kids. You, yeah. you know, you can do that in, in the privacy of your home. Why the fuck did you do this? But you know, support me in public yes that's that's yeah 
that's what I pray. That's the kind of mom I pray to be. We'll find out in a few years. Yeah, what exactly. Mom, what kind of mom you was. Um, what do you think about Angelina Jolie? Love. Love. And, and I feel like she has made concerted efforts to not only honor and support her children's um, ethnic backgrounds, she's honoring, supporting legit every background in the world. She wants to make sure that her kids are comfortable and knowledgeable globally to look at things on the macro, not just the micro. I, I'm into it. I don't know how she talks to them at the kitchen table, but who knows? We'll find out later. We'll find out later. <laughs> but at, <laughs> from what we see now, seems it seems to be all right. All right, so Do, go ahead. The only thing I will say is that, again, media does that whole thing, how um, she's never come out to say, I, I, at least I don't think, I'm not aware how she, how her children identify themselves and how they, you know, present to the world. I don't think she's ever talked about that, but um, I think they're kids. They're not celebrities. They're not making movies and on the red carpet and, you know, the entertainment circle, so to speak. So whatever you see out there, that's shut your mouth you don't need to print about nobody's babies and if you know all of a sudden she switched it up and now she looks like a girl or she used to look like a boy like that's not for you to decide you don't know what's going on but see here's the one thing i have to say though mm -hmm. it's like celebrities who get upset like this happened on social media right now with um is it erica mena safari's wife i think it's her social media she's all upset at wendy williams because wendy williams like had a lot to say about her. You push right. it out on social media. You bring, like Angelina Jolie brings her kids out there. What's but does she? But just just as a picture, she doesn't talk about them. She doesn't do the whole. But I mean, when I she put them out there, you you open them up to criticism. I ain't seen Halle Berry's kids since they was born. Yeah. She don't bring them on the red carpet. She doesn't do any of that. So it's like. You what what you set them up for criticism when you put them in a position like I could see if it was like where the paparazzi is stalking them, but she specifically brings them out and does what she did a whole photo spread with her and Brad. Like what was what magazine was that? Was Vanity Fair or something like that? I don't remember. But remember when they first got together right after Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Yeah. And it was like everybody was like, wow. Um, your kid looks just like both of them combined. It's like you made the concerted effort to put them. I don't know what Janet Jackson's kid looked like. Oh, except for when the baby was first born. Yeah, so I bet that there's... baby's cute as hell. Right, but like that baby's got to be like six or seven now. You know what I'm saying? We don't know. Oh yeah, we don't know what the kid looks like. Maybe yeah. the kid's like six. You know, like. So my point though, I'm gonna Google that that baby's three months old. <laughs> no, because she was with she was with her her husband at the time when the baby was born and they got a divorce like when the baby was like almost one. You know you know what gets me? You know when people have a whole baby and then you come to find out after the baby's like two years old, like what's um what's um uh a Eva? Ava, Eva Mendez and uh, right. Ryan Gosling. Exactly. You're like how'd y'all do that? That's my point. Like you, you, your kids are in the limelight because you let them be in the limelight. That's There's so, so many celebrities people. that just don't have their kids. Nobody knows what their kids look like. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's, like I said, it's one thing if it's a paparazzi shot, you're on vacation from, from a distance. It's another thing when you bought them on the red carpet to that your so-called, so-called job. This is just, yeah. this is just work. How many parents bring their kids to work if like, it's not like bring your kid to work day? So, Somebody. Angelina Jolie, Somebody. Go, go, go back there with, with her. <laughs> Whatever. I'm sure she's a good mom, but we'll, we'll, we shall see. And then I don't trust see. nobody. I honestly don't trust nobody, to be honest, that like does not get along with their parents. Like, you don't have a relationship. Oh. Like right That's before a tough mom one. died is like when she kind of like speaking her, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay. 
Like, how can I really like trust somebody? Like, it's even like when you're when you're dating someone, and yeah. like, well, you're not dating. But if I go on a date and a guy has kids, and he's like, his baby's mother's a bitch. Like, really? Like, how can I fuck with you? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if you dating somebody, say like, I don't speak to my mom. Really? Y'all had an argument, or y'all just don't? You haven't spoken to each other in years. What's the story like, here? Yeah. How can you not have a and and she's not a drug addict. She got a whole job. She's a teacher or some shit. Like how is <laughs> she that? Got a whole job. She got a whole. She got a whole job. job. <laughs> You know oh man so yeah it's that bad anyway i hope my kids never stop talking to me i'd be devastated speaking of talking to moms i still have to talk to my mom and i'd like to you know we have our mom oh. at the center of this, this yes collage. so i i'll go first because i'm already talking um love you mom happy mother's day she's a she's a great mother we've had our ups and downs but the the ups have far outweighed the downs especially as we've gotten older and you know we go on vacation together we have a good time and honestly the only thing that i can do is blame her for not being in a relationship because i'm like first i used to blame you because i'm like look if a guy can't measure up to marissa then it's just not now it's like look if he can't make me want to go on vacation with him as opposed to my mother then he's just not the one <laughs> he's the one <laughs> so mom i need you to like chill with you know making me have a good time <laughs> So I can seek out a new partner. Oh my gosh. Every Mother's Day. <laughs> Every Mother's Day. And you? Um, that's a real I love that picture. Thank you for choosing that picture. I'm sorry it's um, cropped. Like I, I had to choose between the rose or her whole face. No, I like it. And you know what? I looked at that picture and I was like, oh, I see a resemblance with myself. I never saw a resemblance with myself and her. But in that picture, just right now, for some reason, I was like, I feel like we same tribe in it. Like there's something in there that, that makes me feel like we're the same tribe. I will say this is the first year where my grief has not overtaken me with hatred for my mother. So full circle moment. Only you, have took... to, you have to speak on that a little bit because you just be putting um, shit out there and then moving on. <laughs> so my mom died uh, 11, 12 years ago, 12 years ago. Um, and it went from to horrific grief to absolute anger and hatred and full circle. I, uh, I see, I see the good this year, <laughs> my first Mother's day, That's years, but Hey, you're there. Hey, I'm here. I don't know about father's day. I will see what happens when that one. Look, this up. is about mothers. That's this is about your, mothers. Like, let's not. They need to go back where, yeah. So um, for this Mother's Day, for my mom, I will, I will be grateful for, I don't know if it's the genetics. I don't know if it's because I speak of her still. So they're um, on the forefront of my kid's brain occasionally. Mm -hmm. But I see um, very good lessons that I've taken from her and I've tried to impart with my kids. So I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful for, um, it's like, uh, like I traveled a lot and yeah, I, I travel a certain kind of way. And if you can't measure up, I ain't traveling with you, but that's cause her, um, but yes, I wish her a very happy mother's day. Um, I don't know if my, if my belief system says that she's either reincarnated or still watching over us. I don't know. Um, I haven't fully decided all that yet but if she's watching hopefully she'd be proud if she's reincarnated i hope that she's in such an amazing place if she and was happy reincarnated what do you think she would want to come back as uh her damn self a woman herself she probably if she's reincarnated she's definitely my daughter for sure because <laughs> i i never i never understood like there's some like there's just i don't know if it's like the dna or whatever it is but and i i don't know if you can attest to this but i think my mini me and my mother are so alike that it's it's like but how'd you even do that because you didn't even know her right yeah so if she's reincarnated I gave birth to her because she's for real here. She's got the attitude and everything. You never know. 
Yeah. She could very well be reincarnated. Reincarnated. Very well be. I like how I look like I like the way the, the the green screen looks on both of us. Why? Oh, your hair is in a pony. I didn't realize. Yeah, okay. my hair is like <laughs> Is there? <laughs> it's crazy. And I'm I'm look like I'm lower than you, but I'm in my car. But I'm also sitting very close to the camera and I'm sitting on something. I'm propped up higher. <laughs> Your skin looks amazing, by the way. Anyway. Um, so any yeah, so happy Mother's Day to all of the, the Madres out there um and the mother figures mother figures and aunts shout out to my aunt who is she's she's been a mother figure she's a friend and um you know shout out to him um so i want to make a transition to whoops it's time for Teresa's thoughts and now let me change my screen to my other virtual background. Ah, oh. it is Tamika's thoughts, not Melissa's. But you can keep it up if you wish. For those that are watching, um, I just have to get to my my um my word. So. I got a text asking for my support of Hunter Gross for Huntington Town Council. The brief text outlined his age, which is 25, his goals to end corruption in the town hall, climate change, small businesses as it pertains to COVID-19, and making sure working families can afford to stay in the town of Huntington. All good stuff on the surface, but anyone that knows our, our town knows there is a huge racial divide. And so I replied, what is this stance on race relations? It was a reply back that has prompted me to speak out on this week's Tamika's thoughts. You see, he said that Hunter wasn't taking money from the PBA or law enforcement organizations and that he supports the legalization of marijuana so we can invest in black and brown communities who are failed by the war on drugs. My question is, why do so many politicians, specifically local politicians, only always equate drugs and law enforcement with the question about race relations. Why didn't the response include an agreement to support fair employ employment opportunities within the town, including the hall and other local government facilities? Why didn't his response include, include a commitment to ensuring fair and equal practices within the planning, building, and zoning department? Don't get me started on the inequalities when it comes to fair housing within the town that I love so much. My point isn't to get on Hunter Gross or anyone like him, but to simply point out that drugs and law enforcement shouldn't be the first nor the only thing that comes to mind when thinking of the needs of black and brown people. It's a tiresome stance. And if the state of Georgia taught me anything, it's that my vote counts. All right, Marissa, I wanna wish you a happy Mother's Day. Uh, thank you very much. 2020, you won. Happy Daughter's Day. No, no such thing, but it's a nice sentence. Listen, people wouldn't be mothers without kids. Yeah. The celebration is to you. You know, I was thinking, I, you know, it, it, was, it was crazy. I was thinking about um, your boy, because his birthday is coming up. And, mm -hmm. and he just like, like I can't have kids for whatever medical, I mean, I know what the medical reasons are, but the fact that I can't have kids, like, he's like, I'm so blessed. Like, he's my favorite, okay, out of, <laughs> out of every kid. I love my niece and nephew. I love your other kids. But this boy so mad about heart. that boy. Dear to my heart. Like, I feel like he was the forgotten one. Even though he wasn't, but I put that in my head. They don't care about you the way I care about you. 
and one day he's gonna he's gonna recognize like he's at the age now where he's like whatever mm-hmm. but there's gonna be a day where he's gonna sit back and be like damn she really did the extra my, she, she you know she had my back yeah so i want to wish him a happy birthday along with happy mother's day to you happy mother's day to my aunt and my mom and all the other mothers out there that listen to the show and um where can they catch us? Yep, yeah, yes, 18 on Instagram and Twitter. The Yep, yeah, yes podcast on Facebook. Any streaming device, all you got to do is say said device. Please play the Yep, yeah, yes podcast. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube. Holler. <laughs> Bye now. Happy May. Bye now. <laughs>